So, the phone rings. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. He answered the phone. It's your brother. Or maybe it's a close friend. They say they want to talk. They say they lost their job today. Actually, they've lost their third job in six months. They come home and they tell their wife. Their wife packs their clothes in the suitcase, loads the kids up in the car. She says she's through and she drives away. He says, I'm tired of this. I don't know what to do. I'm trying to change, but I can't. Everything I've done has failed, and I don't want to do this anymore. What do you say? What do you do? Today, I would like to talk to you about Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery is a 12-step program that's similar to Alcoholics Anonymous. The primary difference is in Alcoholics Anonymous, you have a higher power. In Celebrate Recovery, our higher power has a name. His name is Jesus Christ. In the interest of time, I only want to go over one of the 12 steps. And I'd like to go ahead and uh, show them to you right now. It says, Principle 2, earnestly believe that God exists that I matter to him, and that he has the power to help me recover. Happier are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And step two, we came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity, for it is God who works in you to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. There were lots of ways that I wanted to try to illustrate this, but at the end of the day, it really came down to a, a section of the scripture in Luke um, it's kind of lengthy, but I think it illustrates my point really well. One day, or when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who had lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair and kiss them, pour perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who was touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replies, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt for him. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time that I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love is shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. We don't know much about this woman. But we know three things. First, the Pharisee and Jesus knew who she was. Second, both the Pharisee and Jesus are in agreement that this woman is a sinner. Third, and this is the primary difference, the Pharisee wanted this woman to change her life and then come to God. Jesus accepted her where she was and then changed her life. And Jesus is still changing lives in <coughs> Celebrate Recovery. In Celebrate Recovery, you can get help with your addictions or problems. We have um, accountability partners and sponsors that will help you through the dark process that is recovery. Um, 
to use the analogy of a football team, accountability partners are kind of like your teammates. These are people who struggle with the same addiction that you have. They understand your pain, they understand where you've been, they understand what you're going through. They can encourage you and can help you through the many dark days that are ahead. A sponsor, on the other hand, is kind of like a coach. This is a person who has already experienced recovery in this area. They understand what it's going to take for you to get better, and they can help you through the 12 steps, steps like inventory or making amends. Now, it's important to understand in a situation like this that you can't force somebody into recovery. But if somebody comes to you and they have an issue and they're ready to make a change, might I recommend celebrating? Thank you.